What's happening guys, Chris Minji G here and today we are doing the second episode of the Galiza podcast. I am joined with the Carl Blake. How are you Carl? I'm not too bad, thank you. How are you? And Andrew Emerson, how are you Andrew? I'm grand, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad. So let's start things off with our regional closest to home, the Leipzig Regional. Uh, what were your take on the event overall to start with? Anyone? Too many duck decks. <laughs> Oh, too many, yes. It was won by Buzzwall Lycanroc. Uh, any any intake on that, like the list, for example? Um, that's, a, that's a really good player. He deserved it, I think. How about you, Andrew? Yeah. I genuinely think it's the best deck we play at the minute. Just the options it has. With Zoro being everywhere, it has an answer to you know, pretty much everything that isn't named uh, Bulu, I find. So... It only gets um, better in prison as well, doesn't it? Oh, you get access to beast energy, don't you? You do. The, the ultra beast support is really, really good. Well, that's a plus. I mean, there's lots of trainers that search all the ultra beasts and do extra stuff with the ultra beasts as well. I think it's really, really strong. Well, the supply surprise second place was uh, by Vika Balu. Uh, what are your rates on the deck, Andrew? Um. If you can find a list that works, which is my problem, um, it's in a really good place in the current meta. Um, you know, with a choice band, you're one-shotting um, Zoroarks. You can one-shot Lycanrocks without discarding. Um, Buzzwall is one-shotted. Um, Glycopod is one-shotted. Um, it's, it's just it, the damage it puts out is so perfect. And with um, Garbodor... You know, nowhere to be seen really at the minute. It's got no garbage toxin to stop it, and it's, it's a case of if you set up, you've got a really good chance of winning. I really like the deck at the minute. Yep. Anything to add, Carl? No, Andrew's right. You've just got to find a list that works. If you can get a turn two, fantastic. Um, if not, you sort of tend to struggle, fall behind. Um, without without Garbador around, it's just a really safe deck. Um, but. I just don't feel comfortable playing it just because, well, I never get a turn two, regardless of what list I'm playing. Yeah, yeah that can't be doing a good deal. No. <laughs> even when, you, even when you, like, you finally got the thing in hand, you're like, oh, right, I'm going to lay low for the Skyler for the rare candy. It's like, oh, of course, Skyler's price. It's just like, well, okay. So, uh, it's never meant to be. No. Third place was uh, Greninja. It was a very interesting list. Do you want to break down the list, Carl? Should have won. Should have won. Should have won. Should have won. I love the deck. I think Greninja's so good. Um, it's always just been one of those decks that if you let it set up, it never loses. Um, but it's also one of the decks, is, it is one of the most inconsistent decks. Um, it's up there with Bulu. Isn't it? You play so many pieces that you don't want to get at the start of the game that just sort of forces you behind. Whereas if you if you run hot and you're going well, you're going to win. Again, the lack of Garbador as well, but just fits in its favour. Issue being the amount of Glossopods, um, obviously being they one shot you, but again that that matchup is actually very winnable. Just just if they, if you can stop the energies coming down, stop them from armor pressing, probably gonna win. But again it's, it's just one of those decks that no one tends to play because they're afraid to play. Yep. Yeah, it's also dependent on how quickly you can get the shadow stitching lock going. Because that type of um, ability lock that they can't get themselves out of is so strong. Yep, that's fair. Fourth place was Mark Lodge. We haven't got his list as of yet, but we know he played the Carbink and Carbink Break sort of play. Uh, what about that? What's your opinions on that, Andrew? Um, he played Garbodor in the deck, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, Buzzwell Garbodor. Yes. Yeah, um, I mean, I like it. When the, when the uh, you know, Buzzwell dropped... And everyone was talking about playing it with um, using the Garbodor mix that was big at the time and whatnot. I mean, I tried that and I wasn't really a fan. I know obviously Galisopod was the same. You played it with the Garbodor mix. And uh, since then, it's been changed to being just a, um, you know, the, the Garb- Toxin Garbodor, which gives the deck more freedom in like have, knowing what it wants to do and trying to get that on. There's less things that get in your way kind of thing. You're not so... Um, 
vulnerable to enhanced hammer as well, which is huge at the minute. So I like the idea of playing just the, the Garbage Ops and Garbage Ops because obviously people aren't expecting it as much. Um, field blower counts are going down because it's less of a threat. And you can you can win games just with the surprise factor of having this card that is really good, but people aren't playing at the minute. Um, so, I mean, it, it tells a tale that when you look through the entire top 32, I think Gunnador makes an appearance twice, um, which is insane for a card that is as good as it is. So, I mean, it's just that I'm not entirely sure what the best part of the problem is. Roswell is a really good card, don't get me wrong. Um, and obviously people know that, so mine might have been about having the Garbador to, you know, just to turn that off and say, nope, I'm going to do what I want to do. Great. Um, I'm just not sure that Buzzwell's the best partner for the Garbador. Yep, that's fair. Anything, anything to add, Carl? I think obviously the biggest surprise there is, is obviously the carving. Um, with the amount of those, like the amount of deck out decks that are there, particularly the ones that rely on sort of like Plumeria, Crushing Hammer, and if you can just set up a puzzle with three fighting units that they can't physically get rid of, you're gonna win. Like there's there's no way out. Um, and if they then do try and go into the Hooper variant, you've then got you can just retreat and actually attack with the carving because they can't get rid of the energy. They can't do anything to stop your basic energy coming down. And then you just, you're just attaching the strong energies when you need to use them for the damage output to carry like a wishy washy or something. Yep, that's it's, fair. It's really, really strong. Um, Carving is obviously insanely good. Just being able to drop a. Uh, keep it active and then just have two fighting energy push straight onto the touch one. And you can, get, you can recycle strong energies as well, which is really strong. Yeah, um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a really good medical in the end, in fairness. Yep, that's so fair. It's something that no one saw, which I think is more importantly. Yeah. yeah. No one recognised the need for the card, and then he just drops it and just batters everything. Fifth place was Zorg, like in Rock, the other partner for like in Rock. Uh, what do you believe its place in the deck is right now, Carl? Four. Uh, Zorg, like in Rock. See, the deck is just really strong. It takes really easy prizes, one shots your opponents opposing Zorgs. It's really just a who goes first and who doesn't miss a beat. Because if you miss a beat, then you lose. Um, but if you go first and you don't whiff, you just you always win. And the amount of mirror matches there are, it just comes down to who's playing better. It's all about and the energy. You can't miss a beat. Like, if you miss a beat, you, you, yeah, you, you, the deck has so few basic fighting energies. You've got to get that basic fighting energy down early. Otherwise, you're never going to attack with Lightning Rock. You're never going to win. And you get an hot hammer, and it's just you're, you're trading two shots, and you're, everyone's playing a Serona, everyone's playing a Rune, so you're just Everyone's playing puzzles to get those back. So it's really just a case of, does your basic fight energy stick? If it does, fantastic. If it doesn't, you're probably going to lose. Yep, that's a fair assumption. Uh, fair uh, overfall. Uh, the sixth place was Tommy Roberts with Gardevoir. This was the Broken Var. variant. Gardevoir kind of missed uh, its place in the meta for a while, but here it is, top eight. What do you think of the deck, Andrew? Um, it's... Um well, seeing the transition f away from, um, well, the deck's really good, obviously. It's a really, really good deck, and nothing changed for that at the minute. There's, you know, back when God of War was the, the big thing, and there was metal decks all around and one, it's fallen out of favour. I don't see why it's not doing s as well at the minute. Obviously, you know, it's hitting these cool bits and whatnot, but um, it still gets through Buzzworld. Really easily. Yeah. Um, it still resists Zoroark. And um, obviously, you're still playing Galliards to get through to the Zoroarks and whatnot. It's a really, it's a really, really good deck. And I don't see why people have stopped playing it quite as much as they have. Um, I know there was that um, one regional where um, Azul played. Was that Memphis where Azul played the. The Galizapod Garbador? Yeah, it was Memphis. Yeah, and, so that, that and that just seems to have been where God of War. People have gone, oh, that's back, let's not play God of War. And I just, I don't understand why, because it's still such a, such a good thing. You know, if you if you get your setup, you're getting your turn three, turn two, even God of War, getting your energy down, you can get your galley out when you need it, then you just beat pretty much everything, don't you? So, yeah, I'm surprised there's not as much God of War brand at the minute. So, you know, why, why are people still playing it? It's still really, really good. Yeah. Anything to add, Carl? I think you just know, if you go into a tournament and you're playing Gardevoir, 
if you play against, like, the, being the most popular deck is obviously Zoroark, um, Michael Rock and Zoroark, Lost Pod. Um, if you go in and you play sort of five to six rounds against Zoroark, Lack and Rock, and you're playing God of War, the Broken Vore deck, you know you're going to win. Like, it's just, it's just such a free matchup. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm just really- <laughs> I would, really de- I would definitely, you. yeah, I would definitely still play two Gallid in the deck as well. If you got two Gallid, you never are losing to Zoroark. Yeah, yeah, and obviously Gallid with obviously the, all the new um, all the deck out decks and that that are stopping you from attacking with EXs and GXs. Like Gallid is just a really solid attacker anyway. The fact that it one shots um, Hooper, Hooper, oh, it one shots Hooper without playing a supporter. Um, obviously, playing a supporter takes you up to um, it's not quite one shotting Wob. Unfortunately, yeah, no, which is a uh, tad concerning, but it's still just a, a really strong card. Yep. Well, no, it goes through, it goes through basic lava fed. It doesn't go through the break. Yeah, it doesn't go through the break. It'll, it'll carry the wob, but, it, but with a wob effect break, everyone seems to be there. Then that will see more play now that um, the guys done that. That will see a lot more play, um, and I think when we go into stuff like stuff out and stuff and. The Mama regional. I think you will see a lot of of the uh, Wobble Fight deck just purely because people like to turn up to a regional for some reason and not play Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the case. So, moving on to seventh place was Volcanion. Uh, it was quite a different list as well. What was your take on it, uh, Carl? Uh, Volcanion is, is, is always been one of those decks. Um, it Obviously, saw a huge play when Kiawe, Kiawe came out. Everyone was like, oh, you can turn one Kiawe, and that's great. Obviously, he's stepped away from that, just going the full on aggro. Um, but it's just one of those decks that everyone's, again, these deck out decks that can't deal with cards that just advance their own energy. So, being able to just go, okay, I'm getting three energy attachments to turn, effectively, as long as you can keep, obviously, the discard with like Sifflers and stuff. Um, and then they can't. Then win because you just they can never get rid of enough energy. Yep. Anything to add, Andrew? Um, no, not really. Obviously, with the decrease in play of Trash Lunch, it makes the Elixir build more powerful. And I mean, what's better than getting four energy and playing one turn and going that beat you? So, yeah, I do like it. Yep. I've played it in my past so, as well. So, I do quite like there's a, um, there's actually a Polish guy um, at Internationals for the UK internet um, and was playing the Silver Valley version I'm playing a version of Silver Valley at the moment I think it's really really strong being able to just one shot Zoroark for fun um, with the with the fighting attachment and um, obviously you just KO Glosspod anyway um, but it's just a very strong card to have it means that you're, you're never constantly searching for switching cards for your Volcanion um, because you can just go okay switch for free and you're not losing the energy you're just consistently attacking and um, and the really only thing they can do is then to try and store you out is to Guzma up the Seal Valley rather than actually try to Guzma up something and not taking a KO. They have to just play around it all the time. Yeah, it puts them under a lot of pressure. To play a was adequate with that, I think, it, you know, lying on evolution in the day is annoying. Um, obviously, it doesn't give itself free retreat, so you stop playing the Float Stone, which makes it a liability. And it's just a two prize with a really bad weakness at the time as well, at the minute as well. I just don't think it's. In my opinion, as worth it than playing straight Volcanium. Yep. But he's still... Yeah, with no Gar- with no obviously with no Garbodor around, it's uh, it's not as as good. Obviously, with just playing all the max selections and stuff, you're not being punished for playing trainers. Um, but I really enjoy Garbodor. It's always been like, in the last few years. It's always just been like the the best thing I played in the last few years. Um, I think if everyone looks back to like older formats. The control decks have always done really, really well. But the control decks are where you're still playing the game. So we stuff like Lux Trump and stuff like that. So you always knew where your prizes were coming from. It's the same as Gardevoir, uh, it's Garbador. You know exactly where your prizes are coming from because you've got all the resist- you've got all the, the knowledge. You've also got the Trampers that are taking KOs. You've got the Jirachis and Settle Steals. You just know how you're taking all your prizes. Um, and your opponent's forced to play around a card. Just by having the deck knowledge there, it's not like they're playing around in Heart's Hammer by not dropping the special energy or anything. You're stopping them effectively from playing trainer cards, like the cards that are actually working for them to play the game. Yep. 
Moving on. Yeah, the, pro- oh. the problem with Trash and Lanch is um, the, the amount of players Zoro are seeing, they just constantly just shuts down the card. So it makes it too difficult for you to be able to you know, compete against those kind of decks. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, a it's a struggle it's a struggle it's the reason it's gone I think it's one of those things that you go into a cup kind of thing if you pick them out there maybe go for a little play pressure on deck you could you know there's times you can just easily work away with um, you know the, the entire day because you know people aren't at the minute prepared for track lunch but yeah I think it's a ball of at the minute <laughs> Moving on to complete the top eight of a very diverse top eight as that was the Zor Galizapod deck. How do you think that's placed at the minute, Andrew? Um, I mean, it's good. Nothing else to say. Um, I really like the inclusion decks that uh, people have been making in the deck with Mew EX recently. Yeah. Um, you know, being able to slap down a Mew, slap down a DCE, and take one shots on Buzzwolves and things like that. It's really, really good. Um. Yeah, it's a two prize attacker that's you know it's got a, was it 120 hit points? Yeah. Um, not really the best, but you know the pros far outweigh the cons with that because you can, I say, it's a surprise. You can throw it down. You can take these prizes for nothing in a deck that doesn't really do that. Um, it's really really good. Um, I mean, puzzle of time. We we know how good that is. The control element with your enhanced hammers and your puzzles and the myriad of field blows the deck plays. Alongside the, you know, the Ace of Rollers and the Guzmas, just to keep your uh, your threats healthy or away out of danger, it's it's just it's it does what it does so well, and I don't see it going away anytime soon. Really, the deck just cannot be the deck out decks that aren't wishy washy. Yeah, no, no, obviously it can't do that at all. <laughs> you just lose, you just straight up lose. You have to end up trying you try and trade shots with a Hooper. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? Like, you can attack with Winnipod, maybe? Or Zoro? Yeah, you can attack with Breakthrough. You can attack with Breakthrough Zoro Lock, but if they don't have anything on the bench, then you're doing 10 damage. So Yeah, it's just nothing, is it? And then they just take away your energy, then they heal it off, and it's just like, you know what, let's just not play this game. I think even with the threat of these stall decks, the deck will, you know, will still see play. You know, it's it has great matchups against most of the things. Um... You know, it's, it's one of those that if you know what you're doing, you can beat pretty much anything in the day that isn't Old Hooper. So, mm. Yeah, that brings us on to number nine. Uh, this will be the last deck we'll do of Leipzig. It is the Wobbuffet Hooper deck. And just stall decks in general, how well do you think they're placed in the meta right now, Carl? I think they're awful. <laughs> just absolutely awful. I absolutely hate them. Um, they are they really well placed in the meta though. It was, it was a choice for some. I know, I know lots of people played it over um, all the tournaments this uh, weekend gone, but it is, it, yeah, it's 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 really really well placed with um, you know the Zoroark decks and these decks that rely on taking two shot big two prize knockouts and whatnot. Being able to put a stop to that is really really good. And the Wobbuffet break that came so out of left field. But to be able to have, you know, the, the, this Wobber Fed that not only is shutting off your opponent's abilities, not only is it only a one prize attacker, but they actually can't knock it out in one hit with Zorro Rocks, um, is really good. Yep. The top nine uh, all together were all different decks, so a huge amount of uh, variety available. Uh, do you believe that's going to continue trend? There's there just that many decks playable at the minute that could compete for the top spot. Uh, what do you think, Carl? Well, Zora, there's just so many like good attackers. Stuff like Zora work is just always good in, in literally most things. Um, I think what you will see is the inclusion of New EX more, um, just because if you're playing that like. Uh, the, like the Glossopod Zoroark deck, for example, you just don't straight away lose to that. Um, having the new EX is just so strong because obviously Wobbuffet doesn't turn off psychic abilities. Um, so you can just steam through that deck um, with just a blanket new EX, just using Zoroark's attack to one shot things. Yep. So that's just one more thing to add on that. But other than that, the, the meta is actually overall quite healthy um, seeing eight different decks is really good it's not like when you saw uh, 
some of the other tournaments where it's just like six like six Garbodors and then like the odd Greninja that kept it that sort of swept in or something like that. So it's, it's quite good to see different decks, but all the decks are realistically doing the same thing. They're all resolving around Zoroark or like a rock. So they're not really different decks per se, are they? Yeah, that's fair. Uh, what about you, Andrew? Have you anything else to add? Um, my personal opinion on Zoroark is not the best. I really like the card and it's a really good card, but I think Zoroark's got too much say in the current standard meta. Um, so I am liking seeing these things like the you know, the, the stall decks that go through Zoroark quite well because they don't play enough energy. Or Oswald, which I'm really, really enjoying myself at the minute. Um, I'm, like, I'm liking seeing these things that are kind of pushing Zoroark and saying to it, no, you're not necessarily the the best deck at the minute. We're going to, we're gonna, you know, knock you off your perch. I, I like that. Um, yeah, less Zoroark's a good thing. Yep. That's fair enough. Unfortunately, we have run out of time uh, for this uh, podcast. We will hopefully be back again to talk about the other events, maybe post-PRISM as well. But hope you enjoyed the podcast. Uh, please check out our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the other YouTubes. Uh, hope you enjoyed the podcast. This is NCG signing out. <laughs>